Ops HQ, the narcissist phone. The phone, the mobile phone or the cell phone, is central to the narcissist world. Once upon a time, there was the landline. We did not have a computer in our pocket from which we could access all of these apps, the online forums, the messaging app, we didn't have a video recorder, a camera, in our pockets. And instead, the narcissist utilized alternative methods of the assertion of control, the drawing of fuel, and the other aspects of the prime aims. The fuel matrix was invariably smaller than it is now. The narcissist's phone is central to his or her ability to obtain the prime aims. The mobile or cell phone was a huge boost for the narcissist when it came along. And the interaction between the narcissist and the uh, phone or phones, the way that they are used, the dynamics surrounding them, is one which is necessary for you to understand. I'm going to explain to you a number of different ways that the narcissist utilizes the phone for the pursuit of those prime aims of fuel and control, character traits and residual benefits. Number one, hoovering. Probably the main use of the telephone is to enable us to Hoover. Whether it is sending a text, an email, a social media message, making a call, or just adding those likes or comments on social media. The mobile phone provides us with a very easy method of hoovering. And this is why it is so important for you as part of your no contact regime to, at the very minimum, change your number and block on various social media apps, but to be more effective, you ought to change your number and come off those social media platforms for a period of time. The fact that we have the means of hoovering electronically and within our grasp means that the likelihood of a hoover is vastly increased where we can do so electronically. By getting a hold of your telephone number, we can ring and text, almost at will. And, of course, during your seduction, this is what happens as we monopolize your time, fail to recognize those boundaries, and engage in the incessant texting, incessant messaging, incessant telephone calls, as we drink up all of your positive fuel and assert control over you, as we continue our march to embedding you solidly within our fuel matrix. The telephone enables us to hoover benignly or hoover malignly. And it is the prime method of hoovering. More hoovers take place through the auspices of the mobile phone than any other method of hoovering you. And therefore, our access to a telephone or telephones, as often we use more than one, something I will return to shortly, is central to our ability to assert control over you and obtain those prime aims. 2. Speed, reach and ease. The mobile telephone enables us to move fast. The assertion of control needs to be instantaneous, instinctive where lesser or mid-range, calculated where greater or ultra. The mobile telephone allows that control to be asserted very quickly indeed. You enter our heads, the narcissism selects that it is green for go to hoover you because we can send you a text. We can contact you on Facebook Messenger. We can direct message you on Twitter. It is fast 
And of course, that means that you are expected to respond to us quickly. As we assert control over you, we need that response from you. And because we can control through doing so quickly, there is the expectation that you ought to respond immediately. It is not acceptable for you to delay. Delay equals wounding. Delay equals a threat to our control. Delay means that you're starving us of fuel. And you must not do those things. The mobile telephone allows us to interact with several appliances around the same time. A text to her, a social media message to him, telephone call then to her, and whilst on that call be dealing with texts and messages, punching some likes, various fuel lines through cyberspace are being maintained all from this phone. Dozens upon dozens of fuel lines, some large and substantial, some less so, all radiating away from this phone, and it allows us to extend our reach. Once upon a time, the best that would be achieved would be some kind of party line, and of course, in those circumstances, the other people would know who was on the line. So invariably, the landline was just used in terms of ringing one person, possibly putting them on hold, saying, I have another call coming in, please hold, and then flitting between the two. There was no capacity for, like a conductor conducting an orchestra, switching between a text, a social media message, a call, a video call, sending some likes and comments back and forth, weaving between all of those things, puppeteering, unconsciously, a variety of individuals within the fuel matrix, the non-intimate secondary source friend, another non-intimate secondary source friend, the intimate partner secondary source on the shelf, the dirty little secret, and keeping the intimate partner primary source in devaluation under control, with the, yes, I'll be back as soon as I possibly can, working late, problems at work, and then reverting to continuing to chat up the newly ensnared intimate partner secondary source on the shelf. Accessing the dating apps, fresh virgin territory for us to go and conquer with all those waiting unaware empaths that are drawn in. You may have noticed the pauses when you send a text. Could it be that the narcissist is engaging with someone else? Invariably the answer is yes. And of course, the mobile phone allows the narcissist energy conservation. Once upon a time, it was more the case of having to get up off one's backside to go and see the appliance. And of course, there was plenty of delicious proximate fuel to be had when the assertion of control in person, and that still remains the optimum method. However, it remains the case now, with the advent of the mobile phone, that the narcissist can serve energy and also avoid the risk of wounding. Rather than turning up at your house not knowing necessarily whether that door will be open to us, we can create a bridgehead, sending some text beforehand, dipping a toe in the water to ascertain whether your response will be favourable or not. And if it is, then narcissism notifies and determines that a physical proximate hoover would not be rebuffed and therefore the risk of wounding vastly reduced. The narcissist looks to conserve energy because there are so many people that ought to be controlled. And whether it's the lazy lesser or the minimum of effort mid-ranger, the fact that they can conserve effort through orchestrating their manipulations unconsciously of the various people in their fuel matrix through the mobile phone is hugely an advantage. The reach is such, of course, that we are able to contact people in other countries, other continents, any time. And once upon a time, you would be lucky if you were able to find somebody that you could contact in the middle of the night. Not so. Now, the narcissist, even if he's based in Western Europe, and it's the middle of the night, will find that it is late evening. In the United States, on the eastern seaboard, and indeed, it has just entered late afternoon perhaps, on the western seaboard, and everything in between, always somebody available, somebody to interact with, somebody to control, someone to obtain fuel from.
or going the other way, providing that it is now afternoon in Australia. The ability now, through that phone, whether ensconced in a bolt hole or even curled up in bed with an unaware, sleeping, devalued, intimate partner primary source besides us, the narcissist tendrils can snake through and across the world, drawing on that fuel and controlling, any time, any place, anywhere. And that is why the phone is so valuable. It's fast, it extends our reach, and it's easy to use, thus conserving energy. 3. Secrecy you will notice the phone behaviours of the narcissist is such that rarely does the phone leave our side. We are attached to it. It is surgically implanted into our hand. Often notifications are off, it's placed on silent, face down, taken to the bathroom, kept in the pocket, so you don't see what's actually going on there. This hive of activity, of new prospects being seduced, old ones being resurrected, all going on within this electronic device, but kept hidden from you. Of course, there are some instances where it is utilised so that you can see it for the purposes of triangulation. But, most of the time, the narcissist operates with extreme secrecy with regard to the telephone. Of course, we can look through yours, but you're not allowed to look through ours. And if you see something on it that looks vaguely suspicious, you'll be met with the first line of the narcissist's defence denial. No, you, you didn't see that. Or, they are just a friend. Oh no, that, don't know who that is, I think that's come through mistake. Of course, often the narcissist will change the names of those individuals so that the, where it's a man and they're engaging with various women, they will be given the male names so that you are less suspicious when the name perhaps prop, pops up as a notification is shown, assuming that they are turned on. But secrecy by an individual with regards to phone use, furtive looks at the phone, glancing down under the table whilst with you, disappearing for long periods of time to the toilet, to the bathroom, because of course the narcissist is sat in there and may not be attending to their business, but is attending to a different kind of business by engaging with other individuals in the fuel matrix. The way that the narcissist behaves in and around his or her phone is a significant indicator as to who you might be dealing with and also with regard to where you are in the dynamic. 4. Often using it. Such is the ease and reach as I've already explained, you will find that many narcissists will be glued to their phones. In some instances, as I have explained it is done, in a secretive manner in order to avoid detection where the narcissism decrees that overt use of the telephone would be a threat to the control of the relevant appliance and therefore the narcissist is guided by the narcissism where lesser or mid-range and through calculated behavior where greater or ultra to act in a manner to avoid detection but in other instances when you enter devaluation especially and the other prospect is being uh, controlled particularly effectively, you may find that the narcissist it becomes less shy about phone use. Whilst you may not have the exact details of what's going on thrust in your face, you will find that while you're watching a film, the narcissist is busy jabbing that screen, muttering under his breath, smiling and laughing as those bits of fuel keep landing. Who are they talking to? Who are they engaging with? Should you ask, you are of course issuing challenge fuel and your concerns will be brushed to one side. Oh, it's just Joe from work, just uh, talking about the football. Or, there's nothing to do with you, mind your own business, as you're told to be quiet and get back to watching the film. The narcissist will often be found using the phone because it is such an easy method of obtaining fuel. Now, of course, the amounts obtained through it vary with regard to the nature of the interaction. If it's text and messages, there are only small amounts of fuel. Calls a bit larger, video calls even more. And we still ultimately prefer approximate engagement. But the use of the phone is a very useful way for maintaining control, even if we're not getting huge amounts of fuel. Imagine the narcissist is like somebody with a room full of spinning plates. He needs to keep them all going. 
in once upon a time, dashing from one to the other physically proximately would be very difficult indeed, time consuming, energy sapping and mean that not as many appliances could be kept on the go at once. Now it's theoretically almost limitless. The narcissist just dips into a relevant chat room, fires off a few comments, sends a few texts whilst he's on his phone, adds a few likes, sends a few comments, and half a dozen, a dozen different appliances can be kept under control and small amounts of fuel are provided. The narcissist is able to keep that fuel matrix readily under control and that is why you will often find the narcissist using the phone repeatedly. Five more than one. It's fairly common for a narcissist to have more than one phone. The archetypal burner phone for use of covert behaviours in terms of seducing somebody without wanting to disrupt control of the now devalued intimate partner primary source. Sometimes used for even nefarious means with regard to a malice campaign against a former IPPS or disengaged IPSS who is now being malign hoovered. I operate five mobile phones in a variety of arenas that I have. One is utilised for instance for consultations. One is utilised for malicious purposes. One is for a particular area of work. Another appertains to my private life and the other is known as the inner sanctum, a particular telephone which is encrypted and used for particularly sensitive communications. I don't carry them about my person all of the time, but those are five different operational headquarters that I utilise to maintain various aspects of my life and fuel matrix. Narcissists will commonly have at least more than one phone and it is often useful while you're being devalued to detect the use of a second phone. It will tell you more about who you are dealing with. Finally, a further aspect of the narcissist and the phone is triangulation. We repeatedly triangulate you with our phone. Whereas it might be sitting with you pretending to watch a film where actually we are looking to what's going on on our phone and not talking to you and not engaging in the film, but pressing the screen, looking at things, devaluing you by ignoring you and triangulating you with this object and of course the people that we are communicating with me. Accordingly, the phone will be used to triangulate. There will be instances of turning the phone face down to cause you to wonder what's he hiding. There will be instances of making the grab towards that pocket and then walking away with a serious look upon our face. What has happened? What is so important that we've had to leave your company gripping that phone? Is it something to do with work? Perhaps somebody has died. Or is it the narcissism causing us to create that appearance when actually we are darting outside to take a call and receive some delicious fuel from the person that is being groomed as your replacement? You would do well to observe the behaviours of the narcissist when you're still remaining in the ensnarement and to understand that its usage is extremely important for us in terms of maintaining, maintaining control over the various constituent parts of our fuel matrix, the obtaining of fuel also, but that falls second to the ability to control, extending the reach, to engage with people that we may not even meet, but are an integral part of the fuel matrix. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.